What's going on, everybody? It's Childish. We're back at it again with the same shirt that I had for the last three episodes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Can you believe it? I haven't showered for four days now. No. Uh, yes, obviously I've showered. But, uh, again, spending one day uh, knocking out all four of these episodes here. This one being the fourth one, the final one. Talking about some of the monsters with passives that could potentially have a little bit more viability in the guild uh, siege defense metaphor, natural four star and under category. Keep in mind, again, if this is your first time tuning in, all the videos are going to be up on top if you want to check them out. Why are we doing this? Because for the simple fact that the Saiyan, the one, the only one of the bigger, uh, better monsters out there that provides that oblivion skill to go ahead and annihilate those passives, is not going to be available for the offender or the offense person. Uh, person that's going to be going on the offense to so go ahead and take him out or take you guys out and silence that passive here. So again, there's going to be a little bit more viability set in place for all of these unique monsters. And that's what we're going to go ahead and look at today. We'll start off with light, then we'll start with dark. Uh, I'll probably work my way down the three stars uh, first again. Talk about some of those and then we'll go right into the force here. So again, probably the one that may not seem like I'm all too excited about, but I think out of all the three star monsters, this is the one that really excites me the most. Uh, is going to have to be Mr. Darien here. Why is that? Because Darien, again, like all the other Vagabonds, had that recent change on the second scale. Now this one is, does damage based on max HP, um, and so you're going to get a lot more value out of it. Of course, the passive here, Knighthood, uh, it's going to be able to provide you the uh, defense mitigation by 20%, not 15%. It used to be 15, now it's up to 20 uh, the passive here is going to be giving you a little bit of accuracy, so it's going to assist in landing these particular harmful effects. And of course, having a light-based monster with a defense break is going to be really, really nice because you essentially could go for anybody and assist the rest of your party in order to take the opponent down by having a defense break in. So I think this one will definitely be utilized quite a bit. Um, uh, I think that... Uh, you know, everybody already has a six star. Um, you know, everybody already has, you know, pretty decent runes on it. If they're using it for Rift of Worlds, if they're not, then they got to slap on some runes in there. But um, I think the damage that these uh, guys can do, these Vagabonds can do, is definitely worth your time to consider building. And why not make it useful? Because, again, if you... Uh, why not? Why not take that? You know, uh, why not make use of it if you have it sitting there in the monster box versus trying to build a whole new one, skill it up completely. This one's easy to kind of get set up here, and of course, this is something that you get every Sunday in the light secret dungeons there. So, a uh, really, really good monster here. Next one up here, one that definitely doesn't need any introduction. If you guys just recently saw my Guild War video a couple of days ago, Mr. Grago here, and this is one that uh, was showcased on Math Plus Games. I keep on bringing them up here. Shout out to Math Plus Games. Uh, shameless plug, shameless plug here. But, you know, this is one of those monsters he talked about combining with community or other units out there that provide those, you know, crazy strong shields. Um, uh, combining them with units like this that so you can get so much more, you know, value out of it. Just making it essentially what he called a god shield, you know, really, really strong shield. So, uh, obviously, this is a great monster here. Uh, cannot uh, Damage cannot exceed 20% of max HP. You know, playing around with the violence that is fun, but I like a vampire set on this just simply for the fact that the mechanic on the uh, on this particular scale here. So I'm going to go ahead and go that route. I was thinking about, I don't know if you guys remember, um, but it was, for anybody that's been G3, Guild Wars and whatnot, uh, I, it was somebody in Malicious, I apologize if I forget his name, but he ran a light, uh, Sylphid light, light uh, golem. You know what the funny thing is? I might even be able to see see who I'm talking about is, uh, let me see, he used to have his setup here, uh, I think he actually changed his name, but he was from Malicious, had, oh yeah, is it less than five? Yeah, less than, okay, less than three now, less than three, but, I mean, this is, this is nuts, like, right, I mean, when you see something like this, Vampire Destroy, I mean, this is just amazing here, this is kind of goes to show what you can do, this is a defense that he's been using for years, like, he's been using this for a long time, and it actually gets wins. I mean, when you think about it, I mean, super, super fast has the attack power increase on the second skill. So pair that with the high speed. You're going to get that next skill, you know, right up away. You got the vampire set to go ahead and keep you alive. And then you got that mechanic of the passive to not let them one shot. So you're getting a lot more value out of getting the heal uh, from his attack here. So really, really nice unit. Um, man, I tell you what, if I had those kind of rules, I would totally play around with Grago in the Guild War defense. Like, you already know he's going to use that in his Guild War Siege defense. Like, if he's not using it in his regular ones, he's going to use that for this one here. So, really, really fun monster. I definitely say take advantage of it if you have the monster here. Uh, next one that we got 
<laughs> oh man, talk about old school monsters. Twenty fourteen. You know where it's at here. Uh, now, oops, wrong, wrong button, wrong button here. So this one here. This is another one of those like. I don't know if it's going to be utilized all too much, but because we already have, a lot of people already have a six star, they may in fact play around with it. Amon, the light bearman here, being able to heal his allies when he critically hits uh, with his passive here. So again, a nice little uh, pseudo heal that you're going to be getting every single attack. Uh, if you pair it with some units that have you know low HP pools, attackers, or defense scaling monsters, you're going to be getting a little bit more value out of this. So hey. Who knows? Maybe somebody's going to be rocking that Amon, Bella, Grago composition here. I mean, I don't know. It's kind of crazy, but you never know. We never know what you uh, can come up with here to, to take advantage of that. So, again, a uh, really unique monster. Um, it's going to be tanky, so it's going to get a lot. You know, it's going to be able to stay alive longer. And, and really, overall, a great monster. Again, kind of got lost in the meta because there's so many other better monsters now. But... You never know. I think people might be able to play around with this. And again, they already have a skilled up six starter already. Why not, right? Why not? Uh, next one up here, moving on to the, those are my, oh, three star ones. I got one more three star one to kind of talk about. This is one that's kind of controversial. Uh, punish the attack power and defense increase uh, each time you're hit. Kind of has that fire monkey king feel uh, where every time you get hit, you get that attack power mechanic. But this one has attack power and defense. So it is an HP based monster. Second skill is according to max HP. First one is not, but it has a beneficial effect remover, which makes it pretty unique um, for this particular situation. Um, again, it needs to be able to take a hit to, to get more advantage out of it. I think I'm going to be building this a hybrid if I were to implement it in my comp. Uh, simply for the fact that it needs to live long enough to take advantage of this passive, right? So again, this could be one to play around with if you wanted to, but who knows? Who knows? I want to bring it up because out of there's going to be like I think there's like seven or eight other monsters that I'm not even going to mention, simply for the fact that there's there's just no way they're going to be included, and uh, the the rarity of getting these monsters is pretty bad. So um, okay, next one up. I think now we are officially moving into the four star category. So in the four star category, the first one here. This is one that. I really, really wish I got, but I cannot complain because I got one that was similar to it by means of Iris here. This one's going to be Figaro the Light Joker. A lot of you guys don't have Iris, but you have this one here. I say take advantage of it. Uh, I like its kit. So the passive, being able to remove beneficial effects every time you perform an attack. And then you have the incoming damage. Uh, can't lose incoming damage for 25% chance. So... Uh, it has an opportunity to stay alive, and uh, again, you can remove beneficial effects. And if you want to pair a despair set on it, you can take advantage of it, you know, and get some get some free stuns in there for that aspect. So again, this is pretty fun. I I really enjoy it. I would build it, you know, speedy, tanky on the despair set if I had a chance. Uh, if you can work in a little attack in there, great. But I think it's more of a crowd control kind of monster here. So uh, next one up here. We got one that is going to be a little controversial, but hear me out when we talk about it. Because, again, a lot of you have this one that you got in some random LND, LND scroll and you just let it sit in the monster box. Mr. Halfus, the light ledge here. So, his passive, being able to uh, get invincibility for one turn uh, if the HP falls below 50%, for above 50%. So, um, what this means is, is that every time it goes under 50%, right from the goes below 50% from that original amount, um, it can, you know, provide that uh, invincibility, keep you alive, right? And so uh, because of that, you know, depending on how you pair it up and what you decide to do, notice that this second skill has a, a, a mechanic on it, a lifetime mechanic, so that can bring you back up to that 50% uh, threshold, giving you another opportunity to take advantage of the passive. So he has a couple of ways of of you know getting his health back right and uh, getting back to square one, but of course if you pair it with some another kind of uh, unit, I don't know if you're going to be going hybrid, but if you pair it with a flat heel to get him back in the in the mix, or if you pair it with like a soon, it's going to assist with the fallen bottom. There's a couple other things, a couple other options you got with this one here, but I think there's some unique things that we haven't really put all together that we could probably take value out of this, but most people don't because there's too many other units within this category that just. Uh, make this one seem like you know super super low and rightfully so he's he's kind of he's good but he's not great right so again a uh, cool unit to point out there cool mechanic there and again it's not like you use it one time and it's gone if you get above that heel and then it works your way back down or get up at 30 percent and you work your way back down then you can take advantage of the passive yet again okay uh next one up here of course this is one that even though it is definitely 
in the top echelon of monsters to get used. We're not even going to waste any time talking about it because you guys already know this is going to be a Guild War defense monster because you already use it for your regular Guild War defense. So again, if you guys do not have never seen Hodam, really fun passive here. Secret Guard. If an ally is about to uh, take death, he will be prevented and uh, get 30% of his max HP uh, will be transferred to the ally from uh, Hodam. So really, really unique passive here. Really makes things a struggle if you are on the offensive side uh, trying to take him out here. So again, generally people build him with a spare set. Uh, and very high resistance, so they can't be defense broken to take it out, or very, very high HP to try to counteract those uh, uh, those coppers out there. Lord knows I've, I've been coppered. I've been, I've, been, I've been trapped on there once or twice here with my copper. So, again, really tanky unit um, that can do some work on the supportive side. Uh, of course, the next ones, these ne all these next ones here, you're going to be like, yeah, I, I already know, but, um, but again, we're going to measure it because they got passive. So if you got this one sitting around the storage, this one has the glancing hit uh, and, a, and a unique uh, pass that's going to be providing a little bit of heal. So similar to the Iris uh, on that aspect, similar to Vercuni, you know, all these all these units with these passive heals, really, really nice. And um, again, it even has a an opportunity to, to bring you another heal with regards to a shield, right? So me personally, like if I had a Molly, you know, we were talking early on uh, about, about some compositions that I would mess around with, like... If I had Molly, I would definitely hook it up with Trevor. Um, you got the small heal, um, but you, more importantly, you got that shield mechanic um, that you can reduce. Uh, I think this one, I don't know if it's three turns or two. I hope it is too similar to the wind one. Let me see the wind one here. This one's, oh, I don't, air shield. I think the air shield, the reduction on this one is going to be a little low. This one is a three turn tool down, but the wind one is a, uh, uh, this was a three turn one max, and then the wind one's a two turn one max. So, but either way, Beneficial effect remover. We got a shield. We got a cleanse, and we got the heal with the glancing. I mean, that's just too strong, obviously, not to use it. You guys already know. If you have a Molly, you're using it. Like you're not, you're not wasting your time on that one here. So, uh, next one up, I think she's right next door. There it is, Iris. Again, not wasting any time with this one. You guys already know she's super viable. Um, beneficial effect on her passive, being able to heal the opponent. I mean, super super great. Has a silence on the first skill, second skill. And then the uh, three turn, or sorry, the, the three hit combo with the third skill, third hit being the AOE mechanic. So obviously a really, really good candidate. I think people are going to crush it. I mean, they, they probably already use it in the regular Go War defenses. So um, still good stuff here. So next one up here, Mr. Lucas. Didn't think I was going to talk about that one, but he's pretty unique. Attacks reform. Uh, get, you know, on your turn will generate a shield and last for one turn. So again, the damage that you do is going to really, you know, play uh play part in the shield or whatnot but again he has to do the attack in order to get the shield so if this guy is not getting a, a first turn to do some numbers to get that shield up i'm kind of concerned about him utilizing it in his comp but again there is a nice fair share of people that do have a lucas that maybe want to play around with it and it does have its own attack its own uh uh it looks like this one's a continuous sentence i thought it was similar to the fire one there relentless strike uh Trevor, I thought it had that one, but it didn't. So it has an attack buff, and then it has a shield. But it also has the attack leader skill, so that is pretty unique. I'll take advantage of that all day. Um, next one, we have the last one for the light category. This one's going to be Mr. Dova here. So this one's one of those that I wasn't too sure about mentioning, but I wanted to go ahead and mention it. At the start of the fight, the attack speed of the ally with the lowest attack speed will be increased according to your level. So this is pretty unique if you have... Uh, a unit that you can synergize well with this unit or another unit and uh, really need a lot more speed to kind of go along with it. So um, pretty, pretty unique counterpart here. And again, keep note that the allies like attack speed will not exceed your attack speed and the skill can't be applied to allies with the same skill. So um, obviously that that's a interesting like ending there that can be played in the video. I'm, I'm curious to see if people actually have it. Like I have yet to see anybody ever play with Dova ever. So... This would be something to mess around with. Again, it has a unique passive. And then, of course, the research mechanic on the second skill, Rapid Agility. I mean, you can find reason to put any kind of a research comp uh, in your Guild War defense, especially if you have, like, something that really would pair well with it. Um, let's see. Moving on to the dark category here. I'm going to take a step right into the three-star ones. Again, keep in mind, guys, that in the light ones, there was about six or seven monsters that were available to talk about with regards to passive, but they are definitely not utilized. Like, there's just no way there's no worth your time to talk about it. So, 
Uh, Three-star category. Let's look at the Awakened ones. I think the first one we're going to take a look at is Schumar. Schumar is definitely not going to be one for the Guild War defense. He's more of an offensive side. This guy can put out numbers. I kid you not. So if you're looking for something to kind of a, a fun unit to play around with, uh, go with like a Galleon, Bernard, X kind of comp, or you could take advantage of that speed lead, the speed buff, and the attack and defense break. Like he's your go-to guy. He would be super fun to play around with, assuming that uh, the units of, uh, you know, the water and wind element that are going to be bringing by means of Galleon and Bernard, those will be able to take the hit. If you got a situation where Schumar is going to be taking the hit, then you're in trouble. Then you're in trouble. Uh, next one that we got going on. This is one that's already utilized uh, in the Guild War offense. I, I know some people have used it in Guild War Demons, but it's been a while. Jewelton, the Dark Werewolf, his passive, Contaminated Blood, 12% of its max HP as damage when you're attacked. This is one that I'd love to use on the offensive side, uh, combined with two fire-based monsters versus the Ciara Orion X comps. Ciara basically kills herself if I don't kill her with Humar's third skill. And uh, this is one of those monsters that people tend to avoid when you put it on your defense. So again, with the Guild War Speed Lead, you can get a lot more value out of it because there's only a handful of monsters that have universal speed leads uh, for the Guild Wars uh, you know, situation here. So... Uh, next one, oh, this, if Burke was watching this video, he would, he would give me some love right now, as I'm going to be talking about one of the first LND monsters that he ever messed around with and made content for. So, Miho, the Dark Martial Cat, eye for an eye, being able to counterattack, uh, attack the attacker with a critical hit to inflict damage or portion to your attack power and stuns them for 50% chance, uh, and your attack bar increases as well. So, pretty interesting mechanic, and multiple ways of providing the CC, so... Um, this is one of those where I don't think anybody's ever going to play around with it, but it has good base HP. It's, I'm sorry, base speed. This base HP is a little lackluster. Uh, this is one of those that I may, if I were to ever play around with them, I think I would try to play around with something with like an attack or damage HP where a little bit more of a hybrid build. But, uh, cause I'm obviously, you want to, if he's going to be going for the unit, you want him to be able to take a hit so that you can get value out of that counter attack. But. Um, I don't, I don't think I'm going to ever see it on the Guild War Defense, but boy, wouldn't that be something to see a unit like this where you essentially, you're put it in there to, to force him to, to type of avoid, you know, try to avoid, and then hopefully you can get, you could be able to do his, you know, uh, main skills here and get some more, uh, stuns brought back in. So, uh, let's see. Now this one here, I definitely feel like people are going to be messing around with it a little bit. Similar to Darian here, recent change in the second skill, Mr. Jubel. Doing damage based on max HP. The provoke is going to be in. And then, of course, the school down reduction every time uh, you're hit, right? Um, which is kind of cool because, again, um, when you think about it, if you're getting hit all the time and you're, and you're constantly using this taunting strike, you're constantly locking down the opponent. They're not getting an opportunity to use their main skills. Um, so, again, you got the defense break to keep you at bay. But overall, the damage reduction, um, receiving a critical hit by 80% is pretty nice. And uh, it can it definitely make for our argument of building him in a little bit more unorthodox mo uh, setup here. If you're not, you, if you, unless you want to just go straight, you know, triple HP or whatnot with high speed subsets and whatnot. So, yeah, he's super, super fun. Really good base speed. Uh, I guess awakened when uh, he, uh, or gets gets, bon or gets brought up when he gets awakened there. So, really, really nice. Uh, next one, this is not one that I would think people are going to use, but they already have a six start. Um, so, we'll, we'll bring him on board here. Mr. Diaz. Similar to Darian, he has that damage reduction, but it's not as much, 15%. Critical reduction, similar to uh, Juba, the one we just talked about. And then it got the attack defense break and the hit point disturb. I don't, I feel like if you're early to mid game and you're just trying to fill in the void, then this fire would be a good monster because you already have a build for Rift of Worlds. But uh, this is not something that you're going to see in the late games uh, for sure. He's just not, he's just easily uh, counterable. So I wouldn't even worry about him. But again, you're early to mid game. Maybe you will mess around with them a little bit if you already have them built. Um, next one here, Mr. Grego, the Dark Lich. Obviously, this this unit needs no introduction. Really unique passive that's really going to allow you to do some good damage and stay alive for a long period of time. Uh, obviously, this has already been utilized in the in the higher level defenses, good defense for quite some time. So there's really nothing else to talk about it. It has a slows, it has a defense break, and it has ways of increasing the amount of damage that it does. And again, reducing the amount of damage it will take. So pretty unique monster all around. Uh, next one up, I think, is Amudad here. I think this is the last one here. 25% attack bar increase each time the enemy turn ends. So obviously, this is a great monster to kind of cut in between and potentially get some stuns if you're rocking the despair set. 
or just reduce the attack bars on the opponent so that you can keep them from taking all the turns that they generally take. Um, make up for all that RNG that's you know happened in the maps or so. Again, that's pretty much it for the LND Nat Fours and under. There's every other monster like again, uh, this Night Comforts here, blah, nothing good. I mean, there's a couple of monsters here, six or seven monsters on both light and dark um, uh, teams that I would definitely not even you know touch to scratch here. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the video once again, guys. My apologies if I look a little glazed right now. We just spent uh, upwards of like two and a half hours. Uh, going through these four videos providing the content for you so i'm a little bit wore out here let me know what you think about this particular lineup of light and dark monsters which ones are you going to use and why put it in the comment section down below i'm really looking forward to hearing back your feedback uh when i can get some sleep after i wake up and get some sleep okay uh that's going to be it guys thank you all so much for tuning in it's your boy child it's your child's play chicken out take care and we will see you next time guys we're out